So I said I was going to do a diabetes blog, so now I am. Um, I was in the sixth grade. I was 11 years old. I was very small for my age. I was four foot nine inches tall. I think maybe I might have grown about an inch, and then I lost 20 pounds. I had the flu for two weeks. It was really weird. Um, not going to say how much I weigh because that's one of my tr personal triggers, and I don't know if anybody out there might have an eating disorder, but my weight at that time would definitely be a trigger. Um, became a goal weight eventually. Anyway, I had had the flu for two weeks, and I loved school. I didn't like missing school for any reason. And But even still, my mom thought that since I'd gotten over the flu, that which just shows you just how strong my immune system was, even with diabetes, I got over the flu, um, that I was just playing hooky and I didn't want to go to school. It was my dad. My dad's the reason I'm still here. My, because he realized that I really liked school, and he said he would take me to the doctor before bringing me to school just to make sure that I was okay. So he took me to the doctor's office, buying me a big gulp of 7-Up on the way, because I was really thirsty and craving sh sweets and stuff, because my body was basically eating itself. It didn't have any way to absorb any of the food. Um, so that's what diabetes is. A lot of times when it gets diagnosed in kids, it's the pancreas has stopped producing insulin, or it just isn't producing enough. Most of the, case, most of the cases, the uh, body has started to attack the insulin-producing cells, T-cells, in the uh, pancreas, and when your body doesn't have insulin, it can't absorb any food that you're eating. So your urine gets filled, your, um, all your waste products, the urine goes right out of your body. It goes in and goes out, and high sugars can lead to all sorts of complications, bad vision, etc. I had been tested for diabetes about a month earlier, and it had been negative. So they're still not quite sure what causes type 1 and what causes it. Usually they think what triggers it is that it's dormant for a while and something triggers it. I know somebody who got diabetes their first day of kindergarten, somebody else the first day of middle school, somebody else their 13th birthday. Um, it can vary from person to person. I know a lot of diabetics who got it at 13 months. There seem to be certain ages that people always get it, uh, if they're going to get it. So I don't know. Um, I got tested at my pediatrician's office, and they told me that I had diabetes and that I needed to go to the hospital. That they, my blood sugars were really was was really really high. Um, my dad brought me to Florida Hospital, which was the closest one. This was back in 1993. It was Friday, September 10th, 1993, about noon. Um, back then, they didn't have laws that hospitals had to treat you no matter what. So, the hospital said that they did not take our insurance. They told my mother who was in tears on the phone with the insurance company, that they didn't take our insurance and that they weren't going to treat me and that it was her fault for not knowing what hospital to bring me to and that I was going to die, that I was going into a coma and I would not wake up. And I did end up going into a coma at that hospital. The last thing I vaguely remember is the EMTs asking me which arm I wanted the vein in, which I now know was because they were trying to keep me awake. But I woke up about two days later in Arnold Palmer Hospital and they told, for children and women and they told me again, that I was going to, that I had diabetes. And all I knew about that was that my, uh, a kid at my school, Matt Zara, when we go to the office once in a while to take a shot of insulin or to prick his finger to find out what his sugar was, and it didn't really seem like a huge deal to me at the time. I kind of take things in stride type of person, not just that type of person. So my reaction to hearing this news was I asked three questions. The first one was, when could I eat? Because I was starving. I was really, really hungry. And I was seriously underway. Um, the second thing was, when can I go swimming again? For some reason, I really, really wanted to go swimming. I don't know. I love swimming more than anything, and it always calms me down, so it has to be it. And the third thing was, uh, where's my sister? I'm not sure if it was that order. I think my sister might have been second. My mom and dad uh, were, my mom was kind of insulted by the fact that I didn't have more of a reaction and that I didn't ask for them. So, but that was what I was thinking about. My sister's first grade class, Ms. McMillan's class, she gave me a Get Well card. I got lots of presents from everybody. I took advantage of it, too. I called my uh, my grandma Mimi and I, uh, before I slipped into the coma when I found out how serious it was, and hinted about the Lego pirate ship that I wanted and how the doctor said I might have diabetes. I know, I was a horrible kid. And any of the cousins that are watching this probably think that's weird. 
And I remember what each of you guys got me, too. I remember Patrick and David and Brian actually came to see me at the hospital, and that um, Uncle Pat even flew Mary and Patrick down, Patrick Riley, from, uh, I think you guys were living in Maryland at that time, outside of, right outside of D.C. Um, but uh, Mary picked out my present, and it was this bright pink elephant rhinoceros stuffed animal, and... Uh, you always did like pink things, Mary. Um, it's okay, though. But, um, yeah. It was nice and cuddly, but not really my thing. Uh, my sixth grade class, typical of middle schoolers, and our class was very cliquish at St. Mary Magdalene, were not very nice. I had two people that visited me when I was in the hospital, and I know hospitals are scary, and I know that probably their parents pushed them to visit me. One was Jessica Evans and one was uh, Josephine Savona, and I know that their parents probably worked near the hospital or in the hospital because I believe their parents are doctors. Uh, you see, the Josephine or Jessica got me this glow-in-the-dark yo-yo, which I thought was like the coolest thing ever. Anyway, I've been diabetic since 1993. It's serious, but I try not to let it ruin my life. It really... I haven't had any serious complications from it. Um, I had an eating disorder that was, that developed a lot from it, um, but I've been very, very blessed with very good health. I've always had a really good immune system. I've never had a poor immune system like most diabetics. <coughs> I've just, I've been really lucky. I, I could have been, off, I could be a lot worse off right now, and I'm not. It's been 15 years, so. Um. I don't know. I could go on for hours about this. Uh, diabetes camp helped me a lot. The friends I made at diabetes camp, Florida's, uh, Florida Camp for Children and Youth with Diabetes, FCCYD, Camp Winona, uh, Gary, my camp director, uh, Sarah O'Brien at high school, Matt Darwin. Matt's philosophy really stuck with me. We went to a couple diabetes support group uh, meetings together, and one of the first things he told me was, the only thing you really had to get used to in life was that it sucks. It's not fair. Um, sometimes life's shitty. You just have to deal with it. And that really stuck with me. Nikki Copeland from Swim Team, who was a couple years younger than me, had diabetes too, and she came and talked to me. Um, I don't have any awareness of my uh, low blood sugars. It's called hypoglycemia unawareness. I have scar tissue on my arms and my calves and on my abdomen from insulin injections and sometimes from poor habits, too. I have hyperlipotrophy and hypolipotrophy, which is lumps and, and dips where I've injected so many times. Um, I was on an insulin pump for four years. I'm no longer on one right now because Kansas Medicaid does not cover it, which is bullshit, but... It just, it happens. I was on one in Florida, and when I finish school and start my teaching career, I'll probably get on one again. Um, I can't take someone because it causes worse eating disorder behavior for myself, which is sad because it did help me have better control. One thing is my, that's helped me recently is my testosterone has really made my levels a lot more stable. Um, and I'm more in touch with my hunger than I've been since I don't know, the first year of diagnosis. I loved that first year of diagnosis because I was so underweight. They told me I could eat anything I wanted, as much as I wanted. I was eating probably half what Phelps said his diet is <laughs> every day for like a year just to get my weight up. Um, but going back to the sixth grade class being clickish, I got one or two cards from my Catholic school class, sixth grade class that said, ha-ha, now you can't have Skittles anymore. Now you can't have Oreos. Stupid middle school crap. But, yeah. Um, I don't really have much else to say other than that. 